Hey, Alex here again. This is just a quickie video. Sorry about the lighting. I didn't set everything up because I'm just tossing this out. But uh, this is in response to some user feedback. User feedback, whatever. Viewer feedback. But uh, I put out a video about um, working with TMC2208 drivers, and I very briefly walked through how to set them up. I figured the process would be enough, like the 2130s, that you could watch that video and then just go to the section right underneath it and wire it up. But uh, it's uh, apparently, it's pretty convoluted, and there's some options with the drivers that they're easier to show you so you know what's going on. That just goes to show that if you're having any problems, just uh, go ahead and ask questions. If you need clarification on one of the videos, then uh, if I have a little bit of time, I'll toss one up to help you out. Because I really kind of like these driver chips, and I think the fact that there isn't a lot of documentation on how to do it is uh, keeping people away from them. So yeah, uh, don't be afraid to ask your questions. I won't even make fun of you if it's stupid. I'll totally make fun of you if it's stupid. Up. Uh, I'm not going to make fun of you, it's stupid. Anyway, let's get to it. On the Marlin end, there's three files that you're going to have to mess with. I'm going to mark these in red. Your configuration advanced, your configuration, and then you're going to have to scroll down and find your particular boards pins.h file. I'm just going to use ramps. So first, let's just go to the configuration. You may not have to change anything here, but I'm including it just because. Uh, I'm just gonna type in a search and look for steps and make sure your steps per unit are where you want them to be. And then you can also mess with your default max acceleration and all that, your jerk settings. Make sure that's all where you want it for the new drivers. Then moving on to configuration advanced, just do a search for TMC2208 and that should bring you down to the trinamic section. So if you read the text here in the comments, it tells you exactly how to go through the procedure that I'm going to show you how to do with the hardware. Just, you know, doing the jumper and hooking up the 1K resistor. So we'll get to that in a little bit. For right now, you just have to decide what motors are enabled and on which axis. So you're going to skip down through your 2130s because you don't need that. And then the second section are your 2208s. So you're going to delete the little hashes that commented out on whichever axis you have. So in our case, X and Y. And anytime I make a change in the code, I put a little comment with my initials. So then I can just do a find on all the files and see what I changed uh, when I move to the next version. Second thing we do in this file is you're going to scroll down and these are all your settings. So this is going to be your defaults for your current and your micro steps, your interpolation, uh, your hold multiplier. Don't mess with the R sense. That's where it has to be. So the hold multiplier is uh, just normalized to one. So I'm going to move that up to 70%. Bump the current up a touch. I'm going to put them both at a thousand. And then I'm running at quarter stepping. So I'm going to put that up to four and leave interpolation on. And we'll basically just continue down that section and uh, select the options that we want. So once we have our current and everything set, just scroll down and this is where we want to use stealth chop or not. So you can leave that commented or you can comment it out to turn it off. If it's green, that means it's off. And then this whole section is talking about your monitoring status uh, for your UART. So if you want to look at that, disable or uh, uncomment this and then put your little initials next to it so you know that you did it. Now you have your hybrid threshold and that's where you're gonna have your crossover between stealth chop and spread cycle. They set it at 100 millimeters a second. You can set it whatever you want. Um, you have to uncomment this little line if you want that to take effect and then you can just change that on your various axis. So the, the sensorless homing stall guard, we don't worry about. That's a 2130 thing. But if you want to be able to send your M122 command uh, for debugging, then you're going to want to uncomment defined TMC debug right here. So just delete those two little slashes. And then you have a little section where you can send uh, advanced options below that, the TMC advanced. There's various things you can put in there. I wouldn't worry about it too much. There are examples of what you can put, but uh, for normal use, you're, you're not going to have to touch that. And that's all we have to do in that file. So then we have to scroll down to our uh, pins.h board, whichever it is for your particular board. Like I said, this is ramps. And you're just going to do another search for TMC2208, and that'll bring you down to the section you want. Uh, 
Now this first section is a hardware serial. I haven't been able to get that to work. Maybe it works in this version. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it. But we're going to use software serial, and this is where you define it right down below. And that just corresponds to whatever the pin designation is in your ramps. And let me show you what that file looks like. Quickly, if you want to mess with these in your Arduino IDE instead of in a text editor, just do the same thing. Open your configuration advanced file, put in 2208, and it'll bring you down to the right section. You can see the changes that we made are in there. And then you can go to that little arrow and you can scroll down to your pins.header board. Um, we're doing the ramps, so just regular ramps there. And then again, just search for 2208 and that'll bring your section up. And you can see that all the changes we made are here. Cool. And make sure we have the libraries installed, because otherwise uh, you can't really do anything with these steppers. Now to make sure that we have our libraries installed, go up here. And under the sketch menu, go to uh, include library and manage libraries all the way up at the top. And then just type in, as soon as it loads, Type in TMC and then install your 2130 if you're going to use that. I already have them installed, but it'll just have a, you know, just the install button, latest version, and then your 2208s. Now, let me show you where to find the pin assignments. Just open up your favoritist browser. In my case, it is Safari. And then uh, just do a Google search for like Ramps 1.4 RepRap, and that should take you to the RepRap Wikis page. And if you scroll down uh, a little bit just below the top header there, you can see this picture, which is just the ramps connectors. And then all these little numbers, they're the pin designations. So if you change to like pin 40, it's going to go to D40 on the aux 2, etc., etc., etc. Usually this is where you're going to have space on the aux 2, but it's possible that's going to be covered up by, uh, you know, your whatever it is, your display. So you can use other connectors. There's a couple pins on aux one that you can use. Those are your hardware serial outputs. Your SPI is there. Your I I squared C is up top. And really like any of these unused pins, you can assign to your software serial. The easy targets are like the servos because a lot of people don't use those over here. And, um, then you're, you're probably going to have this covered up by a monitor or a LCD screen or whatever. But a lot of those pins aren't used. So if you can get to those, if you're really short on space, these, these top ones probably aren't going to be used. Um, your, uh, uh, no, you can't use your thermistors, but you can use your end stop pins uh, just over to the right of that. At least the signal pins that are marked with an S right here. If you want to make sure what pins you can and can't use, open up the ramp schematic bring that up here and then the Megacon up there those are all your pin designations so there are a couple pins that aren't used like d7 that's not even plugged into your ramps uh d22 i think is not plugged in there's a couple more but um down here we can see the hardly ever used aux uh aux one header pins that are available there's also your uh your stepper driver step and direct these two and you can see on the um, Arduino con uh, connector up on the upper left hand corner where those go to up in here. And then uh, any, anything you see on here that you're not using, like if you're not using the min and max end stops, you can always just like assign your just your max end stops up here. And those are going to correspond to X max. You get the idea. So I'm going to just look at the regular RepRap Discount Smart Controller as an example. If you go down here and look at your uh, control schematics, this is a pretty popular board. Um, and this is just to give you an idea if you're running out of pins, what you can use. So if you look at the aux header here, you can see that uh, a lot of these just don't go to anything really. So you could always uh, make your own jumpers with DuPont cables and get all those aux pins back. So anyway, that's enough of that. Let's take a peek at the step sticks and see what's going on. Now, this is the, uh, if you go to uh, GitHub for uh, Vatarat Silent Step Sticks, bring out the uh, TMC2208 version 12, you can see where your uh, little jump pad that you have to solder is. And all that does is send your UART pin to either pin four or five. I don't even remember which one I use, probably five. I think four is the one you're supposed to use. I could be wrong. It doesn't really matter because that's the pin that's going to be sticking up and it just hooks it up right there to your PDN UART. 
Um, and that takes it out of standalone or legacy mode unless you control it. And this is what it looks like right here. So those pins are just going to be floating unless you put a little blob of solder to, to one of the other ones to connect them. Now, as soon as you plug in that UART jumper to the top of your Trinamic board, it's going to ignore your ramp's board jumpers, the MS1 through the MS3 jumpers on the board. So just go ahead and take them off. The jumper uh, 3, MS3, for Trinamic drivers using smart control, like the 2130s or the 2208s, that jumper always has to be off. So make sure you have at least that one pulled. The other two should be ignored, but you might as well pull them off. Now, if you can't or you don't want to use UART, you can run in what's called legacy mode, which does use the jumpers, just like your regular Allegro chips or your Texas Instrument chips. And I'll cover that a little bit in this section ahead. Now, note that you will not have any software control. You can't send or receive any G-code commands, and you will be permanently in stealth chop mode. So if that's still of interest to you, read on. These are your settings. So it's always going to be in stealth chop too and it's always gonna have interpolation on, but you can choose your micro-stepping. Um, really, with the way that the ramp board is set up, you can really only do 16 and four without modifications, but we can finagle two and eight micro-stepping if you really want to. Um, let me show you on the ramp board what that looks like. We'll just click back over to the ramp schematic, and this is just one of the, uh, oops, one of the driver carriers. Now, right here, these are your MS jumpers, and you can see MS1 is grounded if you have the jumper pulled, and MS2 and 3 are floating if you have it pulled. Now, we always want 3 floating when we're working with uh, Trinamic SIPs, but the choices that we have are anything that MS1 is either grounded or VIO, and anything where MS2 is VIO. So we can get 16, you can see right there on the little selection matrix. Um, and then we can also get four. And you can get the other settings. We just have to be able to tie uh, MS1 to, to VIO, MS2 to ground. So if you look right here, um, you can do that. And then MS2, you'll just have to take that jumper underneath the board and run that pin three right there to somewhere to ground. Uh, that'll pull down the MS2 pin and, and put it in that mode if that's something you're interested in, if you want half stepping or eight times micro stepping. Getting out of computer land and into flesh space, uh, let's take a look at what these actually look like. I pulled this driver right out of my printer, so you can see that I have the one pin soldered up. That's the one that I'm going to have jumpered with a little blob of solder on the bottom. The, the rest of the pins, those, uh, what's it, four or five pins underneath, you're not going to need those. So on Trinamics boards, they're usually not soldered in, and then the rest of the pins you just soldered in as normal. Now, if you flip the board over, you see where I have the second heat sink hooked up, and it's kind of hard to see a little blob of solder underneath, so I'm just going to peel that off for a minute. And then th this is the solder jumper pad that I was talking about. Now, there are a couple versions of these boards. The version that I have is the newer version. It has three solder pads, so you can solder it either left or right and choose one of the two legs. The other version, to get it out of standalone mode and out of UART, there's just two solder pads, so you just put a little solder blob jumper in between those, and it'll send it to leg four, I think. Uh, you can test that out with a multimeter, just make sure you have continuity. If you don't have the little solder pad, uh, you won't have any continuity, so that, that's how you'll know that it's in uh, legacy mode and UART will not work. Now, there are also clone boards out there. This is the f tech the whatever, the starts with an F, the white ones. And um, they appear to be clones of the version 1. I have no way to check that. I don't own these. But um, honestly, I got my Step 6 from digikey.com, and they were like half as much as the clones. The uh, only problem is you have to solder the legs in, and that's not a problem for some people because you get to choose which, which leg pins go up and down and whatever. But these are usually set up for legacy mode out of the box, and they won't work with UART without uh, soldering the proper jumpers. And I, it's not open source, so they don't have any documentation. Now, onto the wiring. So this is 
is a UART controlled board and UART is serial. Serial has TX and RX as in transmit and receive. So since we're running these into one pin, we need to change the one of the legs so that you have a 1K resistor in between that pin and your board pin. So I wire up these little Y adapters just with a couple DuPont jumpers, uh, pull them apart, solder together, or however it is you want to do it. Either way, you have to have one end that fits onto your Trinamics board, and then you're going to have two on the other side. So one is going to just be straight wire, as you can see, and then the other has to go through a 1K resistor. And if you forget which of these go to which, just go to your configuration advanced file in Marlin, and you can see right there on uh, line 993 that the serial TX pin gets the 1K resistor. And those pins are selected by, well, you in your ramps dot, or uh, pins ramps header board, whichever board you're using. And as you can see here on a picture of one of my boards, you can see that I have the Y cable with the single end hooked up to the 2208. And then the resistor and the bare end, they both go to the AUX2 header where I have assigned those pins. Consequently, as you can see, I'm running 2208s, uh, 2130s, and standard uh, DRV 8825s on this board. So yes, that is definitely possible. And for what it's worth, here's a different angle that you can take a peek at it. And that's it. You should be ready to go. So uh, before you start printing, I will give you a quick rundown of the special Trinamic G-Code commands. To find these, you can go to the Marlin firmware uh, website. I think it's marlinfw.org or something like that. Go to the G-Codes page and then just do a search on the page for TMC and it should, you bring, uh, should bring you up to those special commands. First one is M122 debugging. Now this is going to assume that you have TMC debug enabled as in uncommented, as in not green text with the two slashed lines on the left side of it uh, in your configuration advanced header file. And if you do do that, then you put an M22 in through your console, like Pronerface or whatever, and this is the output you're going to get. So this is great for checking uh, any problems you might have. Like if your drivers aren't moving, it might be an end stop problem. You could check your end stop status. It'll tell you your uh, current that it is that it current that it's at naturally. It'll tell it what your max current is. It'll do the um, the run and hold, which is the, the little percentage that you could set in the configuration advanced file. It tells you if stealth chop is enabled, what your micro stepping is, all that lovely stuff. And this is really the joy of the Trinamic chips, at least the 22.8s and the 2130s, because you can get this kind of information back and it can really it help solve a lot of problems for you. Here's another one you can mess around with, it's M913, and that'll change the hybrid threshold. That's the crossover between stealth chop and uh, spread cycle. So if you want to tune that in on the fly, or if you want to see what the noise difference is between stealth chop or spread cycle, or if you just want stealth chop when you're moving real slow and then spread cycle elsewhere, you, you could change that. And then right below it on the Marlin uh, firmware site, they show you how to do it. So you would just do like, Oh, excuse me, M913X100 for your X axis at 100 millimeters a second, and that'll set it. And another extremely useful control is the M906 Trinamic Motor Current Command. So that's, of course, going to let you control the current to whatever particular motor it is you're talking about. And that'll let you set the, the RMS in milliamps, so if you're having uh, skipping or overheating or anything like that and you want to mess around with it on the fly, go nuts. So that's it. Hopefully that was helpful. If you have any additional questions, leave them in the notes below. Uh, that should cover everything. I'm sorry I couldn't give more information on the clone boards, but like all that kind of stuff, if they change a the design at all and don't upload um, source files and schematics and design files, bill of materials, I don't know what's on there. I don't know where it is, and I don't know what the board edge patterns look like. So support open source, boys and girls. If you dig this type of content and you want to support it and keep me making more videos instead of doing something else with my life, I have support links down below. And if you haven't already, click subscribe and ring the notification bell to let them know when, to let them know, to let you know when I have a new video coming out. But until that time, get out there and make something awesome.